Section 4 of the Journal of the Rev. Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sandra Robinson. Journal of the Rev. Francis Asbury, Volume 1, September 6th through November 14th, 1772, Section 4. Saturday, September 6th found peace in my soul and held a meeting for the better ordering of the spiritual and temporal affairs of the society in this meeting i propounded the following queries one how often shall there be a public preaching agreed that it should be on tuesday thursday and friday nights besides the lord's day and exhortation on saturday night two shall we have morning preaching this was agreed to three shall we have the society meetings private this was doubted by some but I insisted on it from all rules in Mr. Wesley's last letter. 4. Shall we make a weekly and quarterly collection? Agreed. 5. Can any other means be devised to lessen the debt? The debt was one thousand one hundred pounds, but no other means could be found to relieve it. 6. Ought we not to be more strict with disorderly persons? Very little was said in answer to this. 7. Shall we have the three stewards for the satisfaction of the society? The majority voted against it. 8. Are we as frugal as we can be? It was thought we were. 9. Will the stewards meet me once a week? Agreed. 10. Do we endeavor to avoid all partiality in the things of God? 11. Can we come at the balance of our accounts now or soon? It was thought we could. 12. Who will stand at the door? Not determined. 13. Shall we meet the society on Sunday nights? This was opposed by some, but I insisted upon its being the best time, and at last it was agreed to for a season. 14. Who shall be the collectors? This was not determined, though debated. 15. Can the preacher meet the children? Agreed. 16. Can we spread the books? There was but little said on this head, and it was left undetermined. Monday, September 7. R. S. C. W. and myself set off for New Rochelle. At night I felt myself unwell and my mind under a cloud, but gave an exhortation at Mr. D.'s in the evening. Tuesday 8. This was a day of heaviness, much trouble, sore temptation, and a sorrow of heart, but in the evening I was happy in God and spoke with power and feeling. On Wednesday my mind was warmly engaged, and I preached to many people, both at three o'clock and seven. Thursday 10. Mr. D. accompanied me as far as Kingsbridge on my way to York, where S. S. met me and rode with me the rest of the way. I preached in the evening and rose to preach next morning at five. It appears to me that trouble is at hand, but I fear nothing, being conscious of having acted uprightly before them all, and having no by-ends in view. Whoever has must answer for it. Whatever comes I am determined, and while here by the grace of God to proceed according to the Methodist doctrine and discipline. Friday, 11. I met the people in the morning to discourse with them about their temporal matters, and appointed Mr. C. to take an account of the weekly and quarterly collections. But the other two stewards refused an exact entry of the money that is not settled. However, the people must have the same satisfaction concerning the other collections. Saturday morning I felt a strong desire to live to God and act with a single eye to His glory in all that I do. On Saturday evening we had a comfortable meeting. After preaching to many people on the Lord's Day at seven, I prepared to approach the table. There was a great drawing among the people while these words were enforced, quote, This do in remembrance of me, end quote. Lord, prepare my heart, my bleeding Lord, let my soul feel thy melting love. Lord, make all thy people glad together in thee, that thou mayest be glorified in and by us now and ever. At the table I was greatly affected by the sight of the poor negroes, seeing their sable faces at the table of the Lord. In the evening I had a full house and much divine assistance. Monday 14. I had liberty and love in preaching at five, and this day felt power to live to God. Tuesday 15. I spent great part of my time in company, and preached with some life to a small company at Bloomingdale. Preaching at five the next morning, I had many people and a comfortable sense of God. Wednesday 16. I set off for Newtown, and found nearness to God and more constancy of mind. Our journey was wet and troublesome. However, there was a small company of people, and I preached with courage, disregarding my fatigue, if any good can be done. 
We returned to York in the night, which was very dark, but he to whom the darkness is known conducted us in safety. Friday morning I found great peace. Lord, help me to be always guarded, and fly the very appearance of evil, so that in thy strength I may every moment conquer. Saturday, 19. I felt comfortable in preaching this morning at five o'clock. Oh, my God, help me this day to eye thy glory. We had a melting power this evening also in public exhortation. Lord's Day, 20. In the morning we had a good time, while I spoke from the latter part of the eighty-first psalm, and in the evening we had a very full house, and the Lord favored me with warmth and power while I addressed the people from Romans six seventeen eighteen. After preaching on Monday morning I went to Staten Island. Justice W. met me and informed me that the people were very busy at that time in court, so I went and preached to many attentive people at the ferry. Hitherto the Lord hath helped me. I will endeavor to praise Him with my whole heart and glorify Him more and more. Tuesday I crossed the bay, and preached in the evening at York. Wednesday, 23. In the morning I preached, and felt a measure of peace and stronger confidence in my soul towards God. I am now twenty-seven years of age, and have had a religious concern on my heart about fourteen years, though I felt something of God as early as the age of seven. Thursday, 24. I preached in the morning from Psalm 86, 17, and found myself enlarged in the evening on the subject of the Good Samaritan. This day my soul has felt much love towards God, and my mind has been bent on doing His will. Friday, 26. Attending the lecture today, I heard the doctor with much satisfaction, and in the evening preaching I laid open the plague of the human heart as I had felt it. It was a solemn time. This day we received tidings from Philadelphia on their doing well, both in spiritual and temporal matters. Some have been much dissatisfied with private society meetings and collections in the classes. But in the midst of every trial the Lord keeps me in peace. On Saturday morning, though it was cold, we had many people, and a moving time at five o'clock, and a comfortable season in the evening exhortation. Lord's Day 27. Preaching this morning on, quote, building the tower, end quote, I had some assistance, but experienced some heavy exercises of mind this day. In the evening I was enabled to preach with power on the awful subject of the judgment, attempting, one, to prove that the judgment will be universal, two, to describe the person of the judge, three, to describe the awful events preceding and attending that period, four, to point out the business of the day, five, to show the decision and consequences. Monday, 28. Many people attended the preaching at five o'clock, and Brother S. and myself set off in the forenoon for New Rochelle. As we came unexpectedly on the people, I improved the occasion by preaching on these words, quote, In such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. End quote. Tuesday, 29. At Friend D's, I preached with fervency from Ezekiel 33, 4. I have been much assaulted this day with temptations, but have been kept by the power of God. I find a degree of effeminacy cleaving to me, but abhor it from my heart. The reading of Mr. Wellesley's journal has been made a blessing to me. Wednesday, 30. I was led to speak very closely at P.B.'s to a congregation in which there were many old people, and then returned to Mr. D.'s, where I preached again and enforced the duty of meeting together among ourselves. October 1. I set off for York and preached to a small company at Kingsbridge on my way. This day I received a letter from my mother, informing me she was weak in body, and had an earnest desire to see me once more before she dies. October 3. Though I preached with liberty last night, my mind was troubled to-day, but I earnestly desire to renew my covenant with God. Mr. W. received a letter from Mr. Wesley, enforcing our rules and discipline. My desire is to sit loose to every created object. Lord's Day 4. I felt divine assistance in preaching both morning and evening, but was grieved at society meeting to see the steward desirous to let strangers in. On Monday I wrote to Mr. Wesley and communicated the true sentiments of my mind. Tuesday 6. This was a day of peace and rest to my soul. After preaching at night with some power, I spoke to our steward, whose conduct did not altogether please me, frequently avoiding to speak to me, absenting himself from the meeting of the leaders, the appearance of dissimulation, opposing our rules, and consulting persons who were not members of our society. He appeared to be somewhat affected by the conversation. Thursday 8. In preaching both morning and evening, I had an opening of soul towards the people. I met the society this evening and told them plainly my mind relative to their state as a collective body. Friday 9. I met the leaders, and there were some sharp debates. After much had been said, I was charged with using Mr. N. ill in saying he opposed my meeting the society. 
Mr. L. told me I had already preached the people away, and intimated that the whole work would be destroyed by me. Perhaps this was because I spoke so freely to Mr. N., and desired him to take care what company he kept. Saturday, 10. I received a letter from Mr. Wesley, in which he required a strict attention to discipline, and appointed me to act as assistant. He also enjoined that Mr. W. might not print any more books without his consent. I likewise received a letter from Mr. W., informing me of the state of matters in Maryland, and that it was appointed for me to winter there. For this I intend to prepare. Lord's Day 11. Preached with power in the morning, and spoke freely to a large congregation in the evening. My soul is blessed with peace and love to God. Monday 12. Read one of Mr. Wesley's sermons to the people, and believe some felt it reproving them for evil speaking. My mind is serene and comfortable. Part of Monday was spent in meeting classes, and on Tuesday morning at five I had many people. My intention is to deal faithfully with all, and it is my real opinion that I am not so sensible of faults in any other person as in myself. Lord, help me to be faithful, and in all I do to glorify Thee more than ever. Felt assistance this evening in preaching. Wednesday I went to Newtown, but was not expected. However, we collected many people to hear the word. I then returned to York, and after preaching in the morning was engaged in settling the classes, making up some bands, and meeting the children. I have reason to be thankful, though my trials have been great from many quarters, they have not moved me. Friday, 16. I preached in the morning, and felt resigned to anything, having no choice, but am willing to go to the end of the world if I can be holy and useful. Lord's Day, 18. Preached in the morning with some sensibility, and then went to hear Mr. I, who delivered a profitable discourse on the education of children. He proved the necessity, antiquity, and human authority of catechizing, and made it evident that in the primitive church the best and ablest men were appointed for this work. He gave some account of the school in Alexandria, and told the audience that in this duty there should be both precept and example, and sometimes severity. In the evening I was enabled to speak plainly to a large congregation on Deuteronomy thirty nineteen. Quote, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. End quote. This day we had a love fest. Many people spoke freely, but not long. This I have observed more here than in England, that the people speak short, but yet very full. Monday 19. Set off in the stage for Philadelphia. The company was all quiet, except one young man who frequently profaned the name of the Lord. It was my intention to reprove him, but waiting for a proper time I found an opportunity when there was only one person with him, and then told him how he had grieved me. He received the admonition very well, and excused himself by saying he did not think of what he was doing. Afterward he seemed more careful. After dining at Brunswick we came to Princeton, a place I had long wished to see for the sake of the pious Mr. D., late president of the college there. Here I met Mr. B., and we both agreed in judgment about the affairs of the society, and were comforted together. The next day I came to Trenton, but a drunken sailor had locked up the courthouse, so I was obliged to preach in a schoolhouse where we had a comfortable meeting, and also at five the next morning. Thursday, October 22. In the morning I preached over the river, and in the evening at Trenton with some assistance, and many young people attended. Saturday, 24. Leaving my horse at Bristol, I went to Burlington, and on the Lord's Day my spirit was much dejected, though in preaching I felt greatly assisted, and divine truth reached the hearts of the people. Monday, 26. After preaching at five, I left them and preached in the evening at Philadelphia. All things considered, the people here seemed to be quiet and in good order. On Tuesday, preached both morning and evening. R.S. and myself set out on Wednesday for Bohemia, and on our way we found a few friends from Newcastle that had not deserted the cause. In this journey I called at Chester Jail, and saw the prisoners who all seemed hardened to a man, and among them were the wretched three that I saw escape the gallows before. Two of these had behaved so badly they were now in chains. Lord, what is man? And what am I without thy grace? Keep me, keep me, holy Lord, and never let me go. Let me die rather than live in sin against thee. I spoke freely to one of them, who was a murderer. Thursday, 29. We reached Bohemia, where we found Solomon Hershey, a man hardy in the cause and of good understanding, but his spirit is too warm and easily moved. On Friday I visited E. and R. T., and saw their father in his hundredth year, eating, drinking, smoking, and talking. He appeared as forgetful of eternity as if he had been at the most secure distance from its brink. I think he told me that his father lived to be a hundred and nine, and never used spectacles. Saturday, 31. Rose early this morning, and purposed through grace to devote this day to God. 
I have traveled since Monday week, one hundred and fifty miles. Lord's Day, November 1. After preaching at H's in the morning, I intended to preach in the schoolhouse in the afternoon, but it would not contain half the people, so I stood at the door and the people without. Went to bed very unwell this evening, but rose at five, and, feeling better, set off for Susquehanna. The next morning my soul longed for God. I felt a comfortable sense of His love in my heart, and can rejoice in Him as my all-sufficient portion. In the afternoon we rode in company to the bayside. A few people, who came straggling after the time at friend Nathaniel Giles's, felt themselves affected by the power of God. At friend G's the family was called together in the evening, and R. W. gave a moving exhortation. One person seemed affected. The next morning I rose at five, my usual time, and spent one hour in solemn secret prayer. Friend G. treated me with great kindness and pressed me to call again. I then went to Rocky Run and preached with freedom to a number of people, among whom were many friends. For some days past my mind has been blessed with much peace, so that I experience a present salvation and hope to experience that which is eternal. Thanks be to God for what I feel. Glory, glory be given to my dear and gracious Saviour. Wednesday 4 this evening I had a very solemn family meeting, and spoke separately and pointedly to every one, both black and white. On Thursday morning, rising at my usual time, I had a comfortable sense of God upon my heart. Glory be to thee, O Lord! After breakfast, Mrs. G., her brother, and myself set out for Deer Creek. We called at a friend's meeting and heard two men and a woman speak. They all spoke to purpose. We then proceeded to Mr. M.'s, and unexpectedly found the people at two o'clock waiting to hear the word. I preached with liberty, and the power of God was felt in the hearts of many, though some of them were principal men. The man of the house looked very earnestly at me while I was preaching. I then published preaching at S. L.'s, where we had also a comfortable time. S. L. himself was deeply affected. He had been a ranting Quaker, and a rebellious man, but God hath touched his heart, and wrought a good work on him and several others here. The next day we proceeded to Henry Waters's, whose brother is an exhorter and now gone with Mr. W. to Virginia. The Lord hath done great things for these people, notwithstanding the weakness of the instruments, and some little irregularities. Men who neither feared God nor regarded man, swearers, liars, cockfighters, card-players, horse-racers, drunkards, etc., are now so changed as to become new men, and they are filled with the praises of God. This is the Lord's work, and it is marvelous to our eyes. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name be all the glory. Saturday 7 we had a powerful meeting at H. W.'s. Several from Mr. M.'s followed me, and seemed to give good attention to the things of God. Here I met with Nicholas Waters, an exhorter who appears to be a serious and sensible man. After appointing to meet the exhorters at my return, I went to S. F.'s and preached to many people. Then preached at a place about three miles on my way back, and came to H. W.'s again, where we had a very comfortable time. Lord's Day 8. We had a very melting time indeed while I preached to about two hundred souls from Romans six seventeen eighteen, We also had many people at R. W.'s, while I preached with liberty in my soul from 1 Corinthians six twenty. Quote, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. End quote. This day I have been free from evil, happy and joyful in my God. At the widow B.'s there were many people, both black and white, rich and poor, who all exhorted to seek the Lord while he may be found. Some of the young women in this family are serious and thoughtful. Tuesday 10. I enjoy peace and love in my soul, and am determined through grace to love and seek nothing but God. Preach to many people both at CB's in the morning and IM's in the evening, and was favored with much freedom. Wednesday 11. Many people attended preaching at Mr. S.'s, among whom were some Baptists who went away displeased. The congregation was also large at Friend S.'s. I have read Dr. S. on the non-eternity of hell torments, but in his arguments we may as well prove the non-eternity of heavenly joys for he calls it an Ionian life. Now if the Ionian life of saints arise from the principle of spiritual life derived from Christ, then the Ionian death of the wicked arises from a principle of spiritual death in them, and the one will come to an end as soon as the other. Thursday 12. Preached at Friend G's. There are some Baptists in this neighborhood who oppose the work under us and perplex and trouble our young beginners, though they let them alone. Then returning to friend C's, the word flowed freely, while I preached to many people at six o'clock from 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Quote, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. End quote. Spoke on God's being reconciled to sinners, and showed on what terms they might be reconciled to God, and that none but Christ could bring about the reconciliation. My mind was greatly enlarged while describing the character of gospel ministers. 
Friday morning my soul was happy in God. I rode about eight miles to meet J.K. Many people attended the word at Mr. G.'s, and after preaching J.K. came. We went together to town and stayed all night. The next morning I returned to J.C.'s, where the congregation was large at twelve o'clock. This man's friends have rejected him on account of his religion. The family seem very serious, and I hope there will be a great and good work here. Then rode to Richard Owings, where some people came to see me, with whom we sung and prayed. End of section four.